Hello, and for those who don't know us, but should, this is Nara, I'm Erica, and then this is my 10-month-old male cockatiel named Baloo, who was so gracious enough to donate his time and blood to help us with this project. Um, we're doing our project on a very common disease process that occurs in birds called xanthoma. And xanthoma is a benign mass uh, that's accumulated of cholesterol and lipids that primarily occur in female cockatiels and bungees. Um, you do normally see it in females, but it is possible for your male birds to also get this. Um, and even though it is a benign mass, it, there is potential for these things to become cancerous if they go undiagnosed or untreated in, in a certain amount of time. So what happens is that as these masses begin to grow, then they will start to spread throughout, um, throughout the body. So it's really important to be able to recognize what these masses look like and then getting them to a veterinarian for a proper diagnostic and then proper treatment to follow. Uh, the reason why we decided to choose this disease process is because NARA works at Kings Row Pet Hospital which sees a lot of avian patients and then myself have owned a lot of cockatiels, one of which actually had xanthoma herself. So my bird that ended up having xanthoma's name was Orca and um, she ended up passing away a couple months ago uh, for unrelated issues and so taking this project um, was really good for both Nara and I since she'll probably see this in practice and since I have already gone through the diagnostic and treatment process of the disease. So typically for these masses, you're going to find them in a couple different places. Normally it's by the vent, it can be in between the legs, in the breast area, um, in or on the abdomen, but the most uh, common place to see it is at the tip of the wings, otherwise known as the alula. Uh, for my bird Orca, she ended up having her mass um, on the ventral part of her wing that was parallel to her breast cavity. There are different types of uh, xanthomas that are are common in birds. Uh, the first common one is called cutaneous xanthoma and that's what actually what my bird has and what happened is that the nodules or lesions will start to develop on or underneath the skin. The second most common is called optical xanthoma which affects the eyes so these masses end up creating lesions on the retina or pupillary membranes which can alter their vision and if it goes undiagnosed and untreated um, can actually lead to blindness in birds. And then the most rare form is called internal xanthoma, which will affect the intestines, the uh, heart, kidneys, and pancreas. So knowing the symptoms of xanthoma is really important. Normally these masses will display as a yellowish or orangish color, um, and then they also have like a dimple-like appearance. Um, the best example I can think of would be like an orange peel. Also in that area, you're going to see thickening of the skin, there's going to be ulceration, there's going to be a loss of feathers, and then inability to fly. Um, for my bird, she actually had pretty much all of those. Um, the mass was yellow with a dimple-like appearance. Um, the skin was really thickened, there was no feathers, um, and it had gotten so big that she actually could not fly anymore. And then it ended up getting so bad that she ended up um, sitting there picking at it, causing the mass to open and then also bleed. Um, so thankfully coming to Kings Royal Pet Hospital with Dr. Ditsworth for um, a second opinion um, basically provided the best diagnostic and treatment um, available for her. So what causes anthoma? The co real causes for them is actually unknown, but there are certain conditions that a bird can have that can actually cause be the cause of xanthoma. One of them is a diet that's high in fat because these masses are orange to yellow. They're made of cholesterol and lipids. So a high diet in fat can be given with seeds can be actually one of the causes of xanthoma. Other causes can be actually um, hyperlipidemia or any lipid metabolism disorders, any endocrine disorders such as hyperadrenocorticism or hypothyroidism and even diabetes mellitus can be a cause of it. Um, pancreatitis is also can be a cause for it, cysts and tumors, any prior injuries, and even drugs can be a cause of xanthoma. To diagnose xanthomas, there are two definitive ways to do so. The first one is through a physical examination. As Dr. Disworth showed Erica and I, Dr. Disworth began the physical examination through, from the face to the vent, which is also known as a cloaca. As the face is being observed, they check for the ears, the eyes, which is a common place for xanthoma to be, and the beak 
for any abnormalities. Followed by that, they would go head down to the crop, the keel, and the abdomen for any masses being shown externally. After that, they would head down to the feet and in between the legs and to, again, the cloaca, which is are two other common places for xanthoma to be. Followed by that, they would check the heart rate, which a normal rate would be 220 to 240 beats per minute, following to the lungs to see if there's any abnorm abnormalities of sound, such as wheezes and crackles. The second way to do a definitive um, diagnose for xanthoma is through a biopsy. They will take a piece of the mass and you can send it to the lab and the lab will let you know for a positive diagnosis of the disease. You can also do an x-ray to see if the xanthoma has spread around the body and if the type of xanthoma is actually internally. So as Erica mentioned before, it can actually affect any other organs like the intestines, the heart, lungs, and even the pancreas. Um, so. After that, you can actually do some blood work, but it's not actually the best way to do a definitive diagnose. And for blood work, well, you pretty much will be looking at to see any if there's any like white blood cells increase to let you know that the body is actually working towards an infection. And um, you can also look at the serum. So you can get draw blood, and you can spin down the um, serum separator, and you can look at the color of the serum if it's very yellowish. It's an indicator for very high in lipid. Um, so for the blood work, as you can see in this photo, we use a one millimeter syringe that's bent to a certain degree angle with using the bevel facing down just like how you would do with the cat draw. You, you normally would just do for a blood draw 0.01 milliliters per 10 grams of body weight, aka in other words, 10% of the body weight. And as Dr. Ditzworth shows and demonstrates us here at this video clip, that you pull from the right jugular vein, not the left, because the left, left one is actually vestibule. So there are a couple of different treatment options um, for birds with xanthomas. Uh, the main ones will be surgical intervention or medical therapy. For surgical intervention, what they'll do is just go in to surgically remove the mass and then some of the surrounding tissue. Um, in extreme cases, when the xanthoma has gotten too big and if it's on the wing tip, uh, they'll go ahead and amputate the, the tip of it. Um, this is, again, in extreme um, circumstances and is highly debatable just because um, with them missing part of their wing, they'll have an inability to fly and what's a bird without its wing? Um, so it just raises concern for quality of life. Um, medical treatment, which I ended up doing with my bird, um, proved to be um, pretty good. Uh, the most important thing is a balanced diet. Um, usually when you walk into any type of like super grocery store like Walmart or anything like that, the main food for birds that you're going to find on the shelf are seeds. And like what Nara explained, uh, the main causes of these anthomas are believed to be because of a um, high fat diet. Um, so unless you're actually going to um, a pet food store, um, usually you're not going to find the required food that they need. So for a balanced diet, you want to make sure that they have a pelleted food that's high in vitamin A, and then you want to have a low seed diet. Um, it's actually recommended that they only have um, a couple of seeds a day, um, and then also providing uh, a good amount of vegetables and some fruit. Uh, usually with these diets, uh, what will help is with prevention of these masses forming and then if they actually have the xanthoma with a balanced diet, it will actually help um, decrease the size of the mass. Um, some other oral medications that you can use um, are antibiotics, um, usually when they have a high white blood count, um, and usually they'll use clavamox in birds, um, and then you can use corticosteroids to help with inflammation. Um, some other pain medications you can use are tramadol, which was 100 mg per mil, or a Medicam solution of 0.5 mg per mil. I ended up having to use both of those um, pain medications for my bird since she was ending up like, uh, biting at the site and causing it to open. Um, and then some other things that we did was the um, silvadine cream with lidocaine, and it's a topical medication that you apply to the mass that will help numb it so the bird is discouraged from picking at it. And in extreme cases, um, like what my bird ended up having was e-collar 
um, e having to wear an e-collar. Um, e-collar should be used in short term times um, and it is frowned upon to do it for uh, long term just because when they have the e-collars on, unlike dogs and cats where the e-collar goes outward, with birds it actually goes inwards where it's covering both of their wings, you know, of course to discourage picking. But the thing with that um, is that it discourages them to actually climb their cages and to perch, and then they aren't able to forage their food from the ground. So it's really important that we're making sure that while they have these e-collars on, that they have adequate water and food supply at a reasonable level for them to actually reach it. Um, when my bird ended up having to wear it, another issue that we were coming across was that she did not like it and would start to freak out, which was causing her to put her wings out and then getting them stuck. And then, of course, that would cause her to struggle, which would increase the stress. And um, so, again, not really ideal for birds. And then in long-term use, we always have to consider that um, since it's around the neck, it starts to rub the feathers off and then causing the skin to become raw and sore. Um, there are a couple more treatment options that aren't used as much, um, one of which is massage therapy, which is actually a newer um, idea being used today. Uh, so what they do is that a DVM will prescribe a, a cream that has an antibiotic mixed in with it, usually gentamicin, and then they have the owners rub it onto the mass and massage it twice to three times daily. The issue with this, though, is compliance of the owner actually doing it multiple times a day and then also having a good bird which you can restrain to actually massage that area. Um, other options are radiation. Usually this is used when the mask cannot be removed surgically but the radiation will help, um, help the spread of the mask throughout the body. And then lastly would be um, herbal supplements, uh, one of which is the uh, ginseng, which helps decrease cord um, cholesterol levels, um, which they are probably getting through their food, and then emeraid, which um, will help with nutritional supplement, and then that ties back again with when these birds get it, they usually have a poor nutrient diet, so that's just helping um, getting them everything that they need. So recovery for Sandoma can go by really smoothly depending on the owner's compliance of proper treatment for the proper type of Sandoma. If left untreated, just like Erica mentioned before, the actual benign xanthoma can become malignant. So it's very important to keep this treatment going and making sure that your bird is actually getting better. And within a couple of few weeks, your bird should be back to normal. Well, thank you for sitting here and listening to our wonderful presentation. And we would also like to thank Baloo here with us, who gave you guys a little show. <laughs> And, well, that's Santoma there for you.